Well, based on the feedback from our last um, tutorial, I had lots of comments asking for a follow-up on playing techniques and things to make your playing sound very different and, and original. So I'm going to show you something um, that will, I hope, help your performance. So here we are. We've got a Tens Schlager dance, which is a rhythm from the Superior Pack 2. Um, it's got quite a few great rhythms in actual fact. You've got Tens Spain Pop. Very, um, mm. very yes. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna use Schlager dance because it's quite a nice rhythm. Um, and as I explained in the previous video, this is a rhythm I used unknowingly in the past and then realized it's actually now in this pack. Um, this is using the intro too. Quite a big intro, or intro three. Um, Ooh, no hands. Ooh. Very, very good, powerful intro, but it sounds like a fact. And the, the other thing as well is when you start with an intro like that and you've got friends and family or an audience of 500, they're going to expect when that intro finishes for you to come in with this great big sound and, you know, the world's best performance ever. But it goes from that to this. <laughs> Boom. So it's quite a plain rhythm. And if I go into my... I, this is something you really must take on board as well. This is, this is the golden way to change your sounds. On the main screen of the Genos, in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see a little area that says Channel. Press it. This takes you to the channels that run your style. So when I start the rhythm, you can hear that DJ effect. I can turn that off. There's another phrase in there. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. So now I've got a guitar. I can turn that off. I can turn that piano off if I want to. It's very Robert Miles. Isn't it? That's really, I think that's where they've stolen that bass line from. Um, so I can put the piano back. Now, the song I'm going to attempt to play is Windmills of Your Mind. It's a great song, and it moves all over the place, goes through different key changes and blah, blah, blah. Um, but if you want to modern, modernize and update it, this, this style is great. Da, 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 da. My cable's crossing my hand there. Okay, so we've turned off all the disco parts, the, st the stuff that makes it sound like a rave. So the difference between the two styles, just by turning those parts off, is absolute night and day. Now because it sounds a little bit thin, what I would do is go over here to the left area and I would pick a nice synth pad. 
So if I go into pad, dum -de dum -de dum where's it gone? There's a lovely, is it in synth? No, it's definitely in pad. There's a really nice mellow, ah, sorry, mellow pad. Yeah, there we go. It's a very simple sound, um, very basic sort of synth pad. But if I add the rhythm now, you can do you can do anything. It's a really great sound. And the other thing as well, when you're doing this, never ever forget that you can adjust the volumes of the backing parts as well. So if I start the rhythm, put the left hold on. So if I listen to the, ooh, listen to the drum parts. So if I want that piano a little bit louder, then I'll just turn that left hand down. This is now starting to sound very different to the original. I'm, I'm going to press memory and save that into registration one. Flash, 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 saved, save. So now if I want to call that back, I press registration one and I've got... Turn my right parts up so you can hear what I'm doing with the right hand. So I can save that into registration two. So that's now saved. So registration one, registration two. And of course I can change the variation on the rhythm. So for the first part, I'm gonna change it to A, because it's a much more basic. I'm gonna turn that left hand sound off. So registration one now is just the style with four parts playing. Okay, so if I come out of that screen. Now I don't want all those sounds playing at the same time. I'll just go for the piano and I'm going to go in there and add some more reverb because I want it more dancey, um, sort of poppy. Although I've got piano, and this is why I keep saying this instrument is one of the, like any other keyboard you explore and you play. So I'm going to go into synth. I'm going to see if I can find like a, a bleepy sound to stand behind the piano. I found it. DJ Montage. Uh. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So I'm going to stick that in registration one. So now this keeps changing. This registration one keeps changing and evolving as I'm adding more. So, <laughs> songs evolving as well. So let's go now and find a bit more of meat to put to that sound because at the moment it's very plinky and we want something behind it that adds a bit of depth. I'm going to go into the pad. There we go, bright pad trance. So I'm going to save that at the moment into registration two. So I've now got my plinky plinky sound on one.
And then two. I've got got this extra sound. Okay, so. So what I'm going to do now is, sorry about that, we just had a call come in, just got rid of it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is add a slight variation to the star because we can't keep on variation A. So let's change that to variation B. Put the left hand pad on. Like that. So that's got the pad on. So variation one. So that's the sound on, on one. This is sound on two. And I'm going to go into channel and I'm going to turn on two of the parts. I'm going to turn on chord two and pad. Save that into number three, and then we go to variation C, because obviously we're building through the style parts, as I explain in every single video we do. A, B, C, and for the big ending, we go for D. And so this is C. Now that blinky sound is becoming very boring, so we want to have more of a, um, a lead voice now. So we're going to go to the synth section and we want to try and find That is a great sound. That is going into number 3. A B C 1 2 3. So this is now the main body of the song. Now, again, making the song your own, um, what I'm going to do here is something slightly very different. I'm going to turn all the, the right hand off apart from one. And I'm going to try and find a synth sound which is different. Short. But I want a paddy sound. Not short. Ah, no, we're going to go for mini classic. Because what we want to do here is have a drum break, an actual area where the drum takes over. Okay. So what we're going to do is go to channel and for the style variation D, I'm going to turn everything off apart from the drums and bass. Turn the left off. Okay. Now many of you have said, what, what do I use the harmony and arpeggio for? And I've always said the arpeggio is for synth sounds, synth music, that sort of thing. Well, we're going to have a go at using it. So what I'm going to do is hold down direct access and press the harmony arpeggio button. And then I'm going to go to synth sequence in the arpeggio screen. Turn it on. No, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> Far from it. So we've got synth riffs. Synth sequence two. Do you know, I've not even touched half of this. <laughs> you can understand why. Um, right, that's quite good. Mute arpeggio three. 
So now, if I hold down my, the chord that I'm playing with my left hand, this is for like a middle bridge. So I would hold down the left hand chord, C minor, and play the same chord in the right. And this is a use for the arpeggiator. Um, hold down memory, I'm going to save that to number four. But it sounds bare. So on right two, I'm going to go into the pad section and I'm going to pick, where are we? Our 80s warm VCF pad. Now, if you can hear, the arpeggiator is also affecting the pad. Well, I don't want that. So what I do is hold down direct access over here and press the arpeggio. And then the little cogwheel here at the bottom, I can press and I can assign what that arpeggio is doing. So I can assign it just to the right one voice. So you can hear my chord isn't doing anything because I've told the keyboard only to make that arpeggio work with my right one voice. So if I come all the way out of there, and then turn the arpeggio right one on. It's quite a cool effect, isn't it? Now, if I wanted to go a bit more symphonic and strong, you, you know I love strings. I do, 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 do love strings. Um, so I'm going to go into my strings. And I'm going to bring those strings down an octave. And turn the volume down a little bit. So we're now we've got strings on right three. We've got the 80s warm Z VCF pad on right two and mini classic synth on right one. And this is the sound we get. A word of, word of advice. Uh, when you're playing the chord, you have to make sure you are absolutely dead on the beat. Otherwise, one slight delay and the whole thing's all over the place. Listen. That's my rhythm. That's playing dead on. And then if I'm slightly off, it just sounds like a dog's dinner. Absolutely shocking. And I'm surprised that one of the things that they hadn't done, um, I mean, this is just balmy that they never, never even thought to do this, is sync the timing of the arpeggio to the style. So if you play the chord slightly off beat, it still is playing with in sync with the style. Because if you go over here and you go into the settings, there's nothing here to say sync or time with the style. There's, it's just choose an arpeggio and where you want to put it. That's it. There's no no place I can find anywhere um, to sync this. So that would be a great feature for Genos 2, if there ever such a thing appears. Um, so when you are using this, make sure you play dead on. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. You've got to be absolutely dead on timing. So stick down number five. So I've got my mallet. This is becoming quite a good bank of registrations. So registration one. Registration two. Registration three. And 
and then we'll go to our pad. Just play the chords. Fill in, fill in, break, one, and then go back. And play the, the, the verse again. So we've got five registrations. That's just the bleep. So that's the first time through, one to five. Then what I will do is go back to registration one, go to channel and turn all the remaining parts on and then save that in number six. I'll do the same again with number two. Turn all the parts on, save it number seven. Number three, turn all the parts on. Number eight, number four, turn all the parts back on. Save that number nine. And then number five, again, turn all the parts back on. Number 10. So what we've got is one to five with the, all, some of the parts turned off for variation. And then for the second time through, or if you want to play whatever, something else or a different melody, number six to 10 has the style elements all back as they were. So now I can play full. Whatever ending you want to choose, it, that one particularly doesn't actually work because it's not really in a minor key. Let's try number two. Nope. So it would, if you were going to go for an ending with this style, it would be ending one. Boom. Because the other two are oh, the other two are going all over the place and don't actually seem to fit the song. So we've got ten registrations here. And what I'm going to do is pop these on a USB stick and you can have a go at these at home. This is not something for you to seriously take. Um, and I mean, you can play windmills of your mind if you wanted to, to a bit of an upbeat rhythm. But the thing I'm trying to show you here is the fact that if you're playing something, you never need to stick to convention. You can play anything to any style. Somebody will say it sounds awful. Fine, that's their opinion, and, and stick by your guns. If you like something, you play it. Um, but, I mean, this style you can, you can use for so many different things. It's a really good, good bass line. In fact, if you want to say you did want to play Robert Lousy's Children... Seven. So that's a use for it. Um, 
and I'll give you many others. This this is just I was just having a bit of fun with this rhythm because this rhythm I actually quite do like it. There's quite a few great rhythms in the Superior Pack too, and this is one of the the party ones that I like to play. Um, so yeah, leave some feedback if you've learned something from this, then great. If you haven't, move on. Um, <laughs> no, the idea is that I'm trying to get you to get more out of the instrument than just instead of going registration one, registration two, register. I want you to sit at home and have an experiment with this. Play it. Don't don't just be afraid of doing things with this keyboard because there's so much power under the hood of this. Um, you can do pretty much anything you like. So give it a go. There's no limitations with any instrument. You you know, if you've got the most simplest of instruments, have a play and try different styles. But the channel on and off um, on every single range of keyboard, not just the Genos, is available. And this is what makes your um, sound different. Um, and again, you can even revoice these things. So if I wanted to get rid of that piano, I could simply choose there. I wanted an organ. <laughs> that works well. Um, so you could, you could put an organ on, or an acoustic guitar, and this is the fun. Don't stick to the voices. This is going to be covered in our next webinar, changing the sounds of the styles to your own taste. And anything that you change, when you press memory and then save into a registration bank, it will remember that you've changed those sounds. So even though it's a factory style, when you call it up, if you've changed that chord from guitar to church organ, not as I would recommend it, uh, it will remember. So when you press 7, it will say, OK, you've changed my sound to, to church organ. Here we go. So there's, again, a lot of control and things that you can change. But this is this is the magic button in the corner. I tell everybody to try this. Channel. It turns it on and off, or you, you can change the voice. You can actually go into Style Editor and even go to the level of writing the, the new sound that you prefer into the style and saving it as a style. And again, that will come a bit further down in another tutorial. So I'm going to leave you today with this. Uh, have a go. Leave some comments below. If you've had a bash at it, then brilliant. If you haven't, just you know, just say I, I haven't got time or I'll come back to it later. Um, but if there's anything that you have learnt from this, please let me know. Because the idea is, and I keep saying this, I'd like to see you playing and sounding different to other members. You know, I, w I want you to maybe, yes, use the same style. But revoice that style and take some parts out so that it doesn't sound so glaringly obvious that we're using this all using the same style. Okay, I'm going to disappear, but until next time, take care, keep safe, and um, yeah, give me some feedback.